Good morning, church. Pastor Ben here again. In my last video, I talked to you just a little about some of the gods and goddesses in the Canaanite religion that the Israelites had borrowed from or taken on of their own. Um, it's been said that mankind will become or men will become the thing that they worship or like the thing that they worship. And I think it's probably more accurate to say that we create gods that we can worship safely. We create the gods that we want to worship. In other words, we create gods in our own image instead of understanding that we've been created in the image of God. Let me read something that the Apostle Paul has to say about this. He says in the book of Romans, For although they knew God, they ne neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over to the sinful desires of their hearts, to sexual impurity and the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised, amen. This sounds an awfully lot like just about all the pagan religions, whether it be Canaanite, Egyptian, Babylonian, or even what the Israelites themselves started to do um, after they settled in the land of Canaan. This is a common feature um, of all the pagan religions. One thing about the, the gods and goddesses of the pagan religions, whether they be Greek, Roman, Egyptian, Akkadian, Babylonian, or Canaanite, is they are just like human beings. They, have, they become jealous of each other. They infight, they destroy one another. They, go, they try to get one over on each other constantly. Um, they're, and part of the um, creation myth of the Babylonians, the god Marduk, um, has to destroy the goddess Tiamat, the goddess of chaos. And he takes her body and he cuts her into three parts. One part becomes the heavens, one part becomes the earth, and one part becomes the underworld. In the Roman and the Greek mythology, there are three siblings that divide up the world amongst themselves after the, they, they've destroyed their father, who, is the, who was at that time the god over all the gods. So there's constant conflict, constant warfare, and constant infighting among the gods. Um, the, the Hebrew Bible is in many ways a direct polemic and attack on this system of understanding the world. So in the book of Genesis, we have the creation of the world from out of chaos. But in this case, God doesn't have, our God, the true God, Yahweh, doesn't have to destroy or defeat another God. Our God creates the other gods, if you will, this other spiritual beings. He creates angels. He's the creator God of all these things. He has no rival. He has no opposite. I, in a sermon one time, I asked the question, who is the opposite of Satan? And people said, God. Incorrect. God has no opposite. He has no rival. Well, who's the opposite of Jesus? Well, Satan. Incorrect. Jesus has no opposite. Jesus is God. God has no rival. And that's the, that's the story. That's the central theme of the, of the Old Testament is that the creator God is the one true living God. He has no rival among any other spiritual beings. No angel can hold a candle to him. That's really what the book of Hebrews is all about is that 
Jesus is God and and Jesus has no rival. He has nobody even come close to comparing to him. And so it's important for us to understand these things as we read um, in the book of Kings in particular that um, this is trying to show us that the true living God only desires a relationship. He's not like these other gods that you have to appease. The best thing that can happen to you in the ancient world is that the gods will just leave you alone. So most of their worship practices were about not getting God's blessing or not getting the gods to um, forgive you because they were as sinful as you were. There was nothing for them to forgive. Mostly what you wanted them to do was just stay out of your life because every time that someone had an interaction with one of the gods, in the Old Testament, it turned out poorly for them. It, it always came with a hook. It always came with a price. Um, our God says, I'm paying the price for you. Our God says, I want a personal relationship with you. I want to partner with you in your life. I don't want you to be afraid of me. I want you to respect me and love me. And I'm going to prove that to you by sending my son Jesus to die on the cross, and he's gonna pay the price. All these other pagan religions and all these other um, these other heathens, they, they, all they think is that they either want the gods to leave them alone or they've gotta do something to appease the gods. I'm gonna take care of that for you. I'm gonna send my son to provide the thing that you can't get provide for yourself so that I can have a personal relationship with you as a person. Our God is personal, he's alive, and he loves us. And that's something that you just don't find in any of the other religions. And we can understand better why God was so upset with the Israelites. Because what they were supposed to be doing was showing the world, showing the nations around them, what it meant to worship and follow the true living God in heaven. Not these these created or, or these invented gods that they that they were worshiping and trying to represent with idols of stone and wood and metal and god says i don't need any of that worship me in spirit and truth and we'll be okay thanks so much for your attention today um, god bless you and go be the church